Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons. We're going to go ahead and continue our set of videos, training videos on Trimble Business Center or TBC. And in the previous video, I gave you a real quick tour of the user interface for TBC. And then I showed you how to right click on your project here in the Project Explorer and set your project settings. So we've done that. And now what we want to do is we want to go in and import a raw data file from a field survey so we can review the work that was done by the field crew. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the home tab and we're going to hit the import button on our ribbon. And this pulls up the import dialog. Now the import and export dialog in TBC are unlike any other software I've ever used. So what you do, you don't actually select the file you want to import. You select the folder that you want to import. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this folder right here. And what it will do is it will show you all the files in that folder that TBC will import. And so you can see that folder has two files here. So I've got a northing easting elevation point file. And then I have this data collector file, DC file, which is what comes out of the Trimble data data collectors it's an older file format and so I want to go ahead and import that DC file that has the raw data that I want to review so we're gonna select that file in the pane here and we're gonna hit import now as soon as I do that it pulls up this box okay and this is a very important box you want to pay attention to this what it's telling me is the coordinate system that's been set up in the daily job for the data collector this DC file is different from the coordinate system in the project and it's asking you do you want me to convert your project to match the data collector file or do you want me to go ahead and keep what you've said in the project and convert the the coordinate system information in the data collector file that you're going to import you almost always want to choose the second option so we don't want to change what's in the project based on whatever the field crew did in their data collector okay but in this case I'm going to use the other option. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I know this DC file has a site calibration. So the original control that was set for this project was set with the real-time network, GPS, and there's a site calibration. And I don't want to throw away that site calibration. Okay, I want to keep it. So I'm going to say, go ahead and convert my project to use the coordinate system that was set up in the data collector. That's going to preserve that site calibration. So I'm going to choose this first option in this case, and I'm going to hit OK. Now it's importing that project and there, a couple things are going to happen after you do or after you complete a successful import. One is it's going to zoom extents on the on the map view here, the plan view, and show you your data. Okay. The second thing is you will notice now that both the points node and the imported file node have some ch children nodes here now, right? And I'm, we're going to come back and look at those in a second. So a couple things I want to show you now after we get the data imported if you're brand new to TBC. Okay, the first thing is uh, TBC shows us our points, okay, with labels, point labels, point number labels, okay, and it also shows us our vector data, okay, or the angle distance measurements, the baselines, the vectors that we used to calculate these points. And what TBC will do is it will color code your vectors. So this blue color here, that's for RTK or RTN vectors. This light green is for total station vectors, okay? So as soon as I import my data, I can immediately tell I've got some different types of baseline data here. I got some RTK data, and I've got some total station data, okay? It will also code, um, not code, it will show you a different symbol for your points. So this solid circle is for a regular point. This triangle is for a control point, horizontal and vertical. And then if you have a benchmark, so vertical only control, that'll be shown as a square, okay? All right, so we can imme we immediately get a visual view of our raw data. That's one of the things I enjoy the most about Trimble Business Center. And what I like to do, as soon as I import that data, I want to make sure that I'm in the right spot on the earth, and there's a really easy way to do that in TBC. So I just drug a, a left-sided window. I drug from left to right, and I window-selected this data here. And I'm just going to come over now to the View tab, and I'm going to hit this Google Earth button pulls up this dialog here. I'm just going to hit apply and it's going to immediately pull up Google Earth and show me that data. And we want to know, are we in the right spot in the world? That tells me that I've got my coordinate system set up correctly, more than likely set up correctly. Okay. And sure enough, you can see when you drop in here to Google Earth, it shows us our points and our vectors. 
and I recognize this site. This is the community center that we were working on. So I know I'm in the right spot. So I go ahead and close Google Earth. Okay. Now, let's go over to the Project Explorer pane, and I just want to show you a few things about what what uh, what changed here in the Project Explorer pane when we imported this data collector folder. So the very first thing to note is all the points that were in the data collector file, either as control or points that were calculated during the survey, have now been added to a list. Okay, this is actually called a tree view. And so I can select any of these points, right click on those points and pull up their properties. I can see the point ID or the point number, the feature code for the point, the coordinate, northing, easting, and elevation. It also gives me the lat long since I have a set coordinate system. Okay, And then if you drop this down, you can also see all of the vector information that's related to this point. Now because this is a uh, control point, 10,005, and it was used as a total station setup, you can see we have a large list of total station vectors that are associated with this point. This is a total station vector, and those vectors are sequentially numbered. Okay. So that's the first thing to note, is that we now have a list of points. Okay. The second thing to note is we now have an entry in our imported files. Okay. And it's used and it shows you the name of the data file, and it'll stack files in sequential order. Okay. We only have imported one file, so it's only shown us one file. Now you'll notice when you drop this node down, this is one of the most powerful features of Trimble Business Center, is it gives you a chronological view of everything that happened in that data collector file. Okay. So I can see right here, the very first thing is there was some control points imported. So 10,001 to 10,004, 22,004. And then these little, these little entries here, these are comments. Okay. So it's giving me some comments here. And then I can see the very first thing the crew did is they set up on their real-time network because I have a virtual base here for my real-time network. That's what this RTCM 3222 is. Okay. And then I can see they came down here and started a total station survey on point number 10,005. That's what this symbol represents, total station setup. This gives you your setup information, tells you what point you backsided, what your scale factor was, and then this back bearing, if you drop that back bearing node down, it gives you all the vectors that were shot from this setup, 10,005, and you can see if I click on a vector here, I can see all the information for that vector. So what was my instrument point? What was the point I was shooting? My foresight point, 10,012. What was my target height and my height of instrument? What was my prism constant? What was my horizontal vertical circle readings? What was the slope distance measured? And then finally, what were the calculated values for the vertical distance and the horizontal distance, the azimuth? So there's all the information there on that total station vector. Okay, so the nice thing about this, or the handy thing about this is, I can see a chronological view now of all the data in the data collector file. I can see exactly what my field crew did in what order. Now, one thing I don't particularly like about how this job was done is I've got multiple days here in a single data collector file. So I don't particularly care for that. I like to have each day's data in a separate file, but that's the way the, the way the work on this project was done. So it makes it a little more difficult to understand um, what happened on each day, but we do at least have a chronological view of the data. Okay, now I will point out before we end the video that if you come back into our points list, you'll notice some of these points are in red. That means we have some problems with those points. You will also notice that we have these red flags here. Those are error flags. Okay, so those are telling us uh, we've got some problems in our data that we want to look at before we start to export points. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and save this project now, and we're going to and uh, we're going to close the video. I'm going to end the video. When we start the next video, I'm going to go in and show you. We're going to start to look at some of these points that have been flagged in red to see if we can figure out what is the problem, what's going on with our file here.